Did you know there are foods that promote autophagy? Well, today we're going to find out what those are, according to Dr. Mindy Pels. Dr. Mindy, as she calls herself, holds her chiropractic doctorate as well as holds a bachelor's degree in kinesiology. And she has a channel that I quite enjoy watching because she's energetic and fun. But she also claims to be a fasting expert. So the real question is, is the information scientifically accurate? Well, as a researcher in a mitochondria autophagy lab myself, we'll find out together. Let's talk about food and autophagy. Now, I'm gonna go big level here for a moment. Remember that autophagy is your body's ability to self-heal. That is why we love autophagy, because it is the body turning within and saying, okay, these cells need to clean up. All right, so from the beginning, there are a few errors here. I'm actually not sure if she's getting this wrong or if her editor is, because her explanation is more correct than the definition on screen. Autophagy is an intracellular process, not extracellular, meaning it happens within the cells, but doesn't generally get rid of damaged cells. So we're not cleaning out the actual cells themselves. Still, let's assume that we're on the same page and autophagy is this cellular self-cleansing process. Unfortunately, it's not true that autophagy is always good. There are many instances where autophagy can be detrimental. For example, this scientific review mentions that while some cancers can be fought off with autophagy, other cancers benefit from autophagy. They cite this study as one example, wherein the researchers first showed that autophagy can be increased in cancer cells. I'm going a little high level here, so if you're a fellow biologist, don't crucify me. <laughs> the researchers look at tumor samples at day one, so that's the top panels, and day 15, the bottom panels. The square labeled E is the edge of the tumor, and the square labeled C is the center of the tumor. The greater the green fluorescence, the greater the autophagy, at least by measures of LC3, which is a common molecular marker of autophagy. You'll notice that the whole tumor is undergoing autophagy, and the autophagy shifts from day one being more highly activated at the edges of the tumor and then more activated in the center by day 15. This shows tumors adapting and using autophagy depending on the cellular environment or some other factors. That's pretty freaking cool in its own right, but to relate this back to Dr. Mindy's point, autophagy is clearly not always a good thing, nor does it always clean out our body. Uh, as a quick point before moving on, you might be freaking out because you've been taught that autophagy is the holy grail of health. It generally is seen as beneficial, but context matters, as with most things. I wouldn't go around thinking that autophagy is suddenly going to cause you cancer or anything, but we should be wary of complete statements of good, especially when something like autophagy is also implicated in helping disease states like cancer and other diseases as well. And when we look at different levels of autophagy, what I want you to realize is that when I show you the food autophagy and how we can stimulate autophagy through food, it is not the same power as like fasting for 17 hours. So remember, I would guess if I put 100 fasting experts or health experts here next to me in this video, they would all tell you that the number one way to stimulate autophagy is through fasting and that starts at 17 hours and each hour past 17 hours, you're getting more and more autophagy. It's like a dimmer switch. You turn the dimmer switch on, when you get to 72 hours, it's like boom, maximum of autophagy. Hmm, okay. I agree with Dr. Mindy. No one has ever run a study actually comparing certain foods versus total fasting, but by mechanisms alone and some ancillary research, I'd bet that she's right because of what triggers autophagy. I'll get into those triggers uh, shortly. However, I don't see where she got this 17 hour number from. It's a common thing that I see influencers do. They ascribe some number to autophagy and never cite any references. If that number comes from animal research, well, you can throw it out. Uh, not because animal research is bad, but because of timing data. And on timing data, it really never translates to humans. On the other hand, starving cells for merely an hour can cause autophagy. I've done it in the lab, actually. And if we assume human data, it depends 
where the tissue is taken. Because while autophagy may be increased at one time in muscle, it may take double that time in the brain, for example. But who's going to volunteer a piece of their brain for research? The point is, I think this number of 17 hours needs to be corroborated with some human data before I believe it. All that said, I agree that fasting is likely the best method. Okay, first autophagy stimulating product out there is coffee. Hallelujah. For those of you that are coffee drinkers, we love coffee and it is the caffeine in the coffee that will make a difference in stimulating autophagy. A lot of you have asked me, what about decaf? So black clean coffee is amazing for stimulating autophagy. Okay, so she mentions coffee. I had no idea if she was right or not. So I looked into the literature and sure enough, she's absolutely right. I found one study, although I need to look into this in more depth, that showed a marked increase in autophagy from coffee consumption. A major limitation is that the study was done in mice, but we're not talking about timing here. We're talking about if it happens or not. The answer is yes. And often, although not always, if the question is, does it happen? It can translate to humans, but to varying degrees. However, Dr. Mindy gets one thing incorrect. It isn't the caffeine or at least not solely the caffeine that causes this effect. If we look at the data, we can see that the caffeinated and non-caffeinated both increase LC3, that protein that I mentioned earlier that is a common marker of autophagy. By the images, the right image shows more LC3 puncta. That's the official word for those highlighted dots. What's great about this data is that it's confirmed across three tissues, which is awesome to see, although admittedly <laughs> sad for the animals. So I'd say coffee, caffeine or not, does cause autophagy. Oh, if you want to, the second category that I want to talk about is oils. And there are two oils that will help you with autophagy. The first is our favorite MCT oil. We love MCT oil. Um, and you're going to put that together with some clean coffee. And now in your fasting window, and now we're, we're, not, we're getting ketones, we're stimulating a deeper sense of autophagy, we're cleaning ourselves up in a deeper way. Two things here. First, MCTs or medium chain triglycerides, which are literally just smaller fat molecules, smaller triglycerides. I found one study that looked at this in animals and did show an increase in autophagy, although the animals were also in poor health. I also found a few reviews, but they were pretty sparse on the actual data. So I guess I'd offer the benefit of the doubt here and say that I lean toward agreeing, but I want to see much more data before confirming. In Dr. Mindy's second point, I have to disagree with her characterization of the study. She points out this study, and I commend her for actually referencing a study. And once you open the study, you'll see that the abstract, that's the summary of the study, does indicate increased autophagy with olive oil consumption in mice. However, when we crack open the data, the data is wholly unconvincing. The researchers are measuring three autophagy proteins, ATG7, ATG5, and LC3. The olive oil condition is the EVOO listed, and the CTR is the mice that were not fed olive oil, or the control. Obviously, we see that ATG proteins increased in the EVOO condition, which would imply that autophagy is increased. But as we've discussed, LC3 is the most commonly used metric and we don't see an effect. This is important because if we zoom into our cells, when autophagy begins, it relies on ATG5 to group together with some other ATG proteins. Then they embed themselves into the membrane of the autophagy membrane called the phagophore. It is then up to ATG7 to prep LC3 into its mature form by adding a lipid tag to it, making LC3-2. It is LC3-2 that is an indicator of mature autophagy machinery. So seeing an increase in ATGs tells me that autophagy is starting, but we're not completing the process. That said, this study was also in triple transgenic mice, meaning mice that had three gene manipulations. 
So the applicability is already low. Overall, I don't think this is a solid argument for olive oil, but there are other studies similarly kind of fringe that do also corroborate olive oil's impact on autophagy. So the evidence is very weak, but at least there's a morsel of evidence in favor. Autophagy stimulating yummy foods is our berries, but two berries in particular, blueberries and strawberries. And check this out. This, this is like divine intervention because this morning in preparation for this video, I went to my farmer's market to get some berries and my local farmer, look at this cool berry he had. It is, I hope you all can see this. It is a heart berry, love it. So I would think that if you could find a heart berry, there may even be more autophagy inside this thing or this thing may stimulate more autophagy inside you. So just thinking. But berries, blueberries, and strawberries are great for stimulating autophagy. Blueberries and strawberries. There's some research on this, but again, it's very limited to animal studies, cell studies, and the like. However, many of these studies are using components of the berry, like polyphenols, not the actual berry as a whole. Why is this important? I mentioned that I discussed triggers of autophagy, and this is why. Autophagy is controlled upstream of the whole machinery, the phagophore formation, by a master protein called AMPK. AMPK is sensitive to glucose, sugar levels. So consuming anything, even healthier foods, that contain sugar will inactivate AMPK, thereby inactivating autophagy downstream. Berries have sugar, even if they also contain plenty of other nutrients as well. This isn't to say that berries are a bad food, but they're likely not the best for autophagy stimulation compared to some other consumables. The magic mushroom. Mushrooms of all kinds are getting so much press right now. We are learning so much about the health benefits of mushroom. And we know there are two types of mushroom that stimulate autophagy. Sh uh, shaga and reishi mushrooms are known to really enhance that autophagy effect inside the cells. You can, get, you can get reishi mushrooms and teas. You can probably get both of those in teas. Um, we're experimenting in our household. This is a lion's mane mushroom. We do a lot of that. Great for brain health, great nootropic. Um, so mushrooms, the world of mushrooms, the understanding of mushrooms when it comes to autophagy, we've just begun that discussion here on my channel, but know that those two that I mentioned really help um, keep you in that state of autophagy. Well, I found one study on chaga. The study was in mice with tumors and cancer cells. I mean, I guess it's technically true, just several layers removed from the greatest burden of proof, humans. Interestingly, there are also studies in reishi, and although they aren't necessarily in humans, they were at least human cells. That still doesn't overwhelmingly convince me of anything, but at least the genetic background of these cells is ours, not a mouse. Okay, third category. Stay with me here. I know this has got a lot of lists. No, stay with me, not with her. I have candy. Although I suppose if your goal is autophagy, that isn't really all that helpful. Unless I whip up a study out of my rear end saying that candy improves autophagy. Which it makes me think, you know, all those great studies about turmeric out there, makes me wonder if part of the magic of turmeric, turmeric is because it does stimulate autophagy, which is self-healing, self-repairing. So it's, you know, if you go to one layer deeper on a lot of these studies, you start to see that what, fa what these tools are doing is just enhancing a natural process that's already in your body. Turmeric's not the healer, it stimulates the healer within you, which is so cool. So turmeric and ginger is great. Here are some far more interesting compounds. Turmeric, and more specifically curcumin, has a good amount of evidence behind it in regard to autophagy stimulation. And there's a lot more that I'm not even referencing here. The mechanism has been drilled down to curcumin inhibiting a protein called AKT. AKT activation leads to another master protein activation named mTOR. If mTOR is active, then AMPK in autophagy is normally considered inactive, or at least reduced. So curcumin inhibiting AKT thereby pulls the break off of autophagy by reducing mTOR activity and giving AMPK a pass to increase autophagy. 
as we discussed earlier. I'd still like to see some human studies, just like with all of these others, but I'd feel the most certain about this compound. As for ginger, it seems to function through a similar mechanism, i.e. Uh, inhibition of AKT. It still suffers from a lack of human data, however. Next category of autophagy stimulating foods is fish. Now, with fish, there's a couple fish you're gonna want to lean into. Salmon is, has a great capability of stimulating autophagy. Black cod is another one. Sardines are another one. If you love sardines, more power to you. I just haven't been able to love them very much. I love salmon and I do love black cod. So it's the fattier fishes. They have more omega-3s and that is the part that helps to initiate autophagy and keep that self-repair going. Okay, so there's a nugget of truth here. It's true that there are some studies, again, not in humans, but in cells and animals that show omega-3s stimulate autophagy. However, salmon and fish in general is not made of only omega-3s. So similar to the berry circumstance, it's inaccurate to only look at one component when we should be considering the whole. As such, if we look to mechanisms, I realize it's not ideal, but it's the best that we have. Protein, and more specifically, amino acids found within protein that we eat, stimulate mTOR. Fish is an excellent source, even the fattiest of fish, of complete proteins, thereby stimulating mTOR and reducing autophagy. Again, we're focusing on the trees and missing the forest. I think Dr. Mindy offers some great potentials here, and I learned some things myself through the literature search, but the definitiveness of the science leaves much to be desired, and I wouldn't jump to any conclusions on most of these. I think the two that probably have the most promise are coffee and curcumin at this point. In the future, I hope that we get more concrete answers. But you know, as someone who studies this stuff, guess what else I have for you? Another video on autophagy right here. Thanks for watching. <laughs>